What's up, everybody? Welcome to DFS by the Numbers. This is my betting breakdown for UFC Vegas 7. Like I said, I'm going to be doing this every Saturday morning, just a kind of a condensed version of my thoughts, strictly betting, nothing else, talking some bets, talking my bets, talking some bets I'm looking at as well. Um, it seems like a lot of you guys like that, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, it's very important to follow me on social media, Twitter, DFS underscore numbers, Instagram, DFS by the numbers, because I do throw plays out there every Saturday, um, and there are going to be some plays I don't talk about here that I will be playing on Saturday. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, also subscribe if you haven't yet, would really appreciate that. Like this video, it really helps a lot, even just a, a little like, uh, you know, goes a long way. So we're going to break this car down from a betting perspective. If you want my full thoughts, go watch my other breakdowns. I do a live stream on Friday evening. I do a prediction video on Wednesday or Thursday morning. Um, those are my full thoughts. Those are when I'm breaking down the fights. This, these are my condensed thoughts in a quick 10 minute video. So we're going to start with Tamir Valiev versus Trevin Jones. Um, I like Valiev to win this fight. I like him to win by decision. Minus 125 for Valiev by decision is not a bad play. As for maybe a parlay piece, I don't hate it. Minus 450. Uh, I'm personally not doing that. I don't have a parlay yet, but I will be posting a parlay on, on Twitter and Instagram and all that. Um, there is something I'm looking at, but I think it's a fine parlay piece. Trevin Jones, I think if he wins, it's probably going to be by some type of submission. He looks dangerous on the ground. If he's able to take down Valiev, maybe he can lock up a submission, you know? Um, Valiev's never been submitted. He's never been knocked out. I uh, just see T Tamir winning this by a, a pretty comfortable decision. Maybe he's able to get him out of there late, but uh, Tamir for decision by me. No bet. Uh, Carlton Minus versus Matthew Simonsberger. Um, yeah, I mean, Minus opened up as a huge favorite. The line has came down to where it should be. It should be a pick em. If you will, If you um, bet Simonsberger at plus 200, plus 150, I think you got value. I think the value is currently gone at this point. I think it's going to be a semi-close fight. I guess looking at the Simonsberger inside the distance, plus 240 is not a bad look. Um, other than that, probably going to pass. But um, Simonsberger inside the distance, I feel like if he wins, it, I think it has a good chance to end inside the distance. So I don't hate that whatsoever. Uh, if I doesn't go to decision, plus 125. I think I'd just rather play that Simonsberger if I was to play it. Um, Ike Von Weber versus Jordan Wright, my first bet of the night. Very, very low-level fight. It's really hard to pick a side here. Um, both these guys are not that good, but both these guys have tendencies to finish or get finished. So Jordan Wright, the under 1.5 has hit in all 11 of his fights. He's been in the second round one time and he finished the fight shortly after. Uh, we saw him get knocked out fairly easy against uh, Anthony Hernandez there. Uh, and then the same with Vill Villanueva. Uh, most of his fights have been ending before that 1.5 um, minute mark in that, in that second round. And he's been finished five times. I don't see this going past that 1.5 mark. I have a bet on it. As soon as the line opened, it was at plus 100. I had to bet it right away. I, I thought there was tons of value there. I think it's at minus 120 right now. I still think it's a, a good bet. I have one unit on that. My first play of the night, I do like that to go under. Hard to pick a side. Um, I'm just going to bet the under and, and see somebody hopefully get knocked out in that first round. Selecki Hubbard. Uh, tough fight to call. Very tough fight. I, I do think that if you got value, you got value on Hubbard if you bet him at plus 150, plus 140, plus 130. I do think this should be a pick em. This fight is going to be very, very close. I'm kind of tempted to take a play on, on Selecki if he does get to an underdog, but really it's just going to be a pass. Really what it comes down to for me is who's able to implement their game plan. Is Selecki going to be able to get takedowns, hold him down? Um, I can see Selecki winning that first round, Hubbard winning that third. Who's going to win the second? So this fight is so close. I'm probably going to pass. Like I said, if you got Hubbard at an underdog price, I do think you got value, and I wish you the best of luck because I'm probably staying away from this fight. Uh, Mizuki uh, Inoue versus Amanda Lemos. Again, if you got um, Lemos at an underdog price, I think you got some value. Another fight that's going to be very close. I can see Lemos winning that first round, but after that, I really question her gas tank. And Inoue's no scrub. She's been in there with some some great girls. Uh, she's the more experienced fighter. She's fought she's fought that better competition as well. But uh, yeah, I'm picking Inoue. I'm I'm not gonna bet it unless she becomes maybe a, a bigger underdog. I think there would be some value on Inoue. So you know, check Twitter for that. But um, like I said, if you got Lamos at an underdog price, you know, wish you the best of luck. I do think you got some value there. I do think this should be a pick 'em, uh, maybe a slight uh, favorite uh, of, of Inoue. Daniel Rodriguez versus Dwight Grant. I'm going Rodriguez here. I don't hate the the plus 125 by decision. I don't hate that at all. Um, plus 130 fight doesn't go to decision. If you think this fight's going to end inside the distance, uh, might as well bet Grant to finish the fight. I think Grant's only path to victory is to win by a uh, finish, you know? So plus 410 for Grant, you know, plus 535. If you're on Grant, plus 535 by knockout. That's his only path to victory, in my opinion. Rodriguez is going to bring the pressure, bring the pace. He's going to outland Grant probably 3-1. to one. 
Um, he just throws so much more volume. So if you're on Grant, plus 535, that's not a bad price. But I'm going with Rodriguez, not going to bet it. Probably not going to parlay it. I think the line's a little too wide there. I even thought his line was wide against Sato. But uh, should be a fun fight. I think it's probably going to be, uh, I think it's going to be probably fight of the night as well. So I don't hate a shot on on Rodriguez. I just think the line's a little bit too wide. But like I said, if you're on Grant, there's some, there's some options you can look at. Plus 410 inside the distance, plus 535. I think that's a lot of value because uh, I just don't see him winning decision. I really don't. Maria Agapova versus Shanna Dobson. This is my second play of the night. And I have the under 1.5 again. I mean, I find it so hard to see Dobson surviving seven and a half minutes. I don't know about you guys, but I really think Agapova can get her out of there in the first round. Agapova has like six or five or six finishes in the first round. And we just seen Shanna Dobson get knocked out by Priscilla Ketchup beating. If you're getting knocked out by Priscilla Ketchup beating, you obviously shouldn't be in the UFC whatsoever. So I think Agapova comes in here and gets her out of there early. Some things I want to point out though, um, I don't hate parlaying Agapova minus 365 inside the distance. I don't hate that. I really find it hard to believe that Dobson will survive a full 15 minutes. I think that's a, a nice parlay piece there. Obviously, you can't parlay the minus 1300. Um, you just can't do that. Uh, but yeah, minus 365, I think it's a fine parlay piece. And that's something I also might be looking at as well. Um, so I would get that out on social media if I was to parlay that. And that's probably an option there. But I got the under 1.5 at minus 155. 1.5 units on it. I like that quite a bit. Um, also want to point out, and I might do this as well, Agapova round two is plus 450. If you think that Dobson can survive five minutes, then plus 450 is not a bad number. I might put a small amount on that to kind of hedge out my uh, under 1.5 and maybe hit them both if the, if the uh, finish is early second. So plus 450 is something to look at as well if you do think Dobson can survive that early onslaught, the, the early five minutes. But um, I don't really see Dobson surviving like 10 minutes. So I'd be very surprised if she did. Complete mismatch. All right. Um, Mike Rodriguez versus Marcin Procneo. Don't bet this fight either way. I think the value is on Procneo, believe it or not. Um, just Mike Rodriguez, someone who you can never trust with your money whatsoever. We've seen him lose as a big favorite more than once. But uh, it's a fight he should win. I guess if I was to bet it, I'd look at the Rodriguez by KO, minus 130. I mean, that's not an awful number. I think you're getting some value there because I do think if he wins, it's probably by KO. Um, the under 1.5 is another is another good look here. I think that's like minus 130, minus 125. I didn't bet it myself, but I think it does finish. I think it finishes early. Procneo has been finished twice in the UFC, um, both in the first round, once by Sam Alvey and once by Anka Live. So don't hate the 1.5 under there. Um, Rodriguez by decision. I mean... I think if anything, Rodriguez by KO minus 130. Don't parlay Rodriguez. Don't do it. Trust me, do not do it. Even if it, if it, even if it wins, uh, I don't know. It's just hard to trust that guy. All right, Alonzo Menafield versus OSP. Um, the money is coming in on OSP. I don't really understand it. So I do have a bet on Menafield at minus 130. Uh, if you guys want to know why, I'll get into it in more detail. Uh, Post my breakdown. I've been talking about it all, all week here. But I do think he wins. I think he's able to stuff the takedowns. He's coming in. Looks like a lot better shape. He's been working on his cardio. Heard in his interviews. Looks fantastic on Twitter. Uh, looked fantastic at the weigh-ins as well. I think he um, got that first loss and went back to the drawing board and really worked on what he needed to work on, which is that cardio. Um, Metafield um, by KO plus 140 is not a bad look, but I just bet him straight at minus 130. Obviously, it's minus 110. I think there's some some great value there. So, Menafield for me, um, I don't necessarily see people betting OSP, but I see people picking against Menafield. I think it's more of a, a fade on Menafield, and I understand it. He looked he looked gas out his last, his last fight, but I don't know. I like Menafield quite a bit. Pretty confident in that, and, um, and yeah, I like that quite a bit. So, main event of the evening, Pedro Munoz versus Frankie Edgar. Um... I don't know. I think the line is coming down slightly on Munoz. I think it actually it's like minus 265, minus 260 right now. This is the potential parlay piece I'm looking at. I've seen people bet the um, Munoz inside the distance, you know, before it got to like minus 130. I don't, I don't hate the minus 130, but Edgar in his career he is you know known to be very durable. But just as of recent, he has not looked you know as, as durable. He's 38 years old, coming down to weight class, so. Is Edgar's durability there? I'm not sure, but you know, in his career, throughout his career, he's known to have that durability. You know, coming down to weight class, is that going to help him? Is that going to hurt him? I don't know. So I'm not overly comfortable with betting Munoz inside the distance. If you do, um, I think you'll be fine. But I just think there's that chance that um, that Edgar maybe takes it to a decision. But uh, I like Munoz a lot in this fight. 
Not going to break it down too much, but uh, I think he's going to be a potential parlay piece for me. And, you know, not going to get too much more into that. I mean, you know, Munoz inside the distance, minus 130, Munoz by KO. I mean, I think there's, I mean, he has a, uh, I don't really see him subbing Edgar, but he has a really good submission game. But uh, I guess I like Munoz as a parlay piece is what I'd like to say. And then inside the distance, if you bet it, I, I see a lot of people betting it. I think it's a fine bet. Um, but just, I'm probably not going to touch that. So that's about it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Quick video here, just my final thoughts, all condensed into one small video, all my bets. Make sure you guys like this video if you enjoy this content. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Would really appreciate that. Would really love to get to 6,000 subscribers soon. Would be a huge milestone for me. Uh, make sure you guys keep checking my social media, uh, DFS underscore numbers uh, on Twitter. And then Instagram is just DFS by the numbers. My DMs are always open for any questions at any time. I'm up late at night. I'm up at like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock sometimes because I do most of my work at night. Um, I do this stuff full time. So my schedule was always clear to be able to communicate with you guys. And I think that... Um, is something that people really like about me. I'm able to contact very easily. But with that said, good luck, guys. If you have any bets, if you guys are going against me, they're going the other way. Good luck to you all, uh, all as well. And uh, let's make some money on this on this not so great card.